Ganja Goblin will be my co-host for this evening. Hello. So, going to have to premise some of the, what I'm going to be saying here with everything I'm about to say is purely anecdotal. Part of what's gone on with the legalization and prohibition of marijuana has meant that there's not been enough proper medical information gathered to make a lot of positive claims. There's a lot of stuff people will tell you about weed, like it will put you to bed, it will do this, that, the other. A lot of that is mostly unsubstantiated or sort of a byproduct. Some of the stuff we can say about like what goes on is that CBD in particular is a muscle relaxant and that THC is a euphoric and... I believe it's in like an, an anti-inebrian it's in a similar vein to alcohol, but not quite so. To people who don't know what it feels like to be high, the closest you can get is if you are a long distance runner. There's a point in your run you'll reach called the runner's wall, where it'll feel like your muscles are on fire and you're like breathing is going to give out and you're pumping like battery acid through your veins. If you can get through that, you reach a point called runner's hot where you stop noticing all that pain and you can go for far, far longer than you honestly think you can if you can get past the runner's wall. That's not to say that everybody should push for that. It takes a lot of work and you need to know how to come back down after because it's hard on the body to push it that far if you're not experienced in endurance running. I, I was going to say one thing too. Um, regardless of how experienced you are with endurance running, I would not suggest doing that while high. Oh, definitely not. Because you won't know when you've hit the limits and you're not going to know when you've pushed your body too far if you're just keeping telling yourself, I can keep going, I can keep going. You know what I will do, uh, Ganja Goblin? I will give a quick, um, my own testimonial, <laughs> because uh, as everyone knows, I am a huge proponent of THC, kind of the reason we're doing this tonight. But believe it or not, Zalen threw this idea out. So I'll, I'll give a quick why we're doing this and why I feel the way I do, um, and then I'm okay opening things up. First of all, I just want to say that I want to thank, we've had a few guests uh, who have been more than amazing and, and willing to accommodate us and push uh, their uh, reserved uh, recordings with us a little down the road. Uh, Zalen is still sick with COVID in the heat of it right now, but okay, just, you know, hurting. So Zalen is here and listening and with us, <laughs> I was going to say in spirit, <laughs> with us in icon only. We'll talk about THC for the rest of the evening and uh, not just talk about it, but I'm going to enjoy it as well. So if any of you would like to partake with me, I think that would be part of a fun evening. But yeah, I'll just quickly start by getting myself out of the way and, and why I feel this way. <laughs> My little testimonial for the plan of the hour. And I joke a lot, but um, I'm being very serious about this. <laughs> I credit marijuana with playing a huge part in what I consider to be my awakening or my intellectual journey, if you will. My mind functions at a pretty high speed. I have to slow myself down all the time, but it's to the point where it's often counterproductive. And, and THC helps me slow that down. Probably have ADHD, and it was just never diagnosed as a child, but the higher doses are how I sleep at night, and light, lower doses are how I relax or how I study best. Um, it can create short-term memory loss, like during the studying, you know, while high, so the retention isn't always the best. But other than that, there's nothing better, as far as I'm concerned, for abstract thinking, for the ability to relax the mind. And that right there, that's it for me, the ability, the ability to relax the mind. I have trouble relaxing my mind, and the only thing that I've found that can help me and help me do it in a healthy, safe, and effective manner is cannabis. THC, marijuana, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> a rose by any other name, right? I would never call anything my savior, but it is the closest thing I have to a savior. So I guess uh, every time I will take Mary Jane over Virgin Mary. <laughs> every time. So, so like that, really, that's just, that's how I feel about the plant. And, and it is, by the way, I say that as well. It's a plant of the earth natural as can be. So I don't want to take a bunch of time up. If anybody wants to jump in and tell their stories, it can be about positives, negatives. It can be about the medical aspects or the pleasure, fun of it. Completely open to hearing whatever anyone has to say. And I will say one more thing too, and I'll add this at some point tonight if I don't now, so I'm just going to do it now because I know it's on my mind. One of my favorite humans has a quote that I've tweeted more than a few times, and I'm going to just say it again because I know I can do it by heart. The illegality of cannabis is outrageous. 
It's an impediment to the full utilization of a drug, which helps produce the serenity and insight and sensitivity and fellowship that we so desperately need in this increasingly mad and dangerous world. Those are the words of the late, great Carl Sagan. If I believed in kindred spirits, I'd consider him a kindred spirit. Uh, he was a human of science, but he was, he was also very much about compassion, integrity, um, and he thought that logic and reason were the way to get there. And, and it brought a love for humanity that you could just hear in his voice every time he spoke. And, and, and I agree with him. To me, when you see me do those three emojis, peace, love, and science, uh, sometimes I feel a little goofy doing it, but there's meaning to that. I literally do those three every time because to me it means I think that we can get to peace and love through science. And, and I feel like Carl Sagan embodied that. And he was a huge proponent of THC, huge not so much in his lifetime, which is another story, had to write under a pseudonym because it was not okay in academia to speak positively about cannabis breaking down the walls, right? Uh, Ganja Goblin, you can feel, uh, stay, feel free to jump in. So I just want to point, like, there are some risks involved if you go a little bit too overboard with what you're taking. There's a bit of risk of paranoia. If you yeah, I, I, I was, I'm sorry, I'll jump in one second. I was going to ask, I, I want you to go further with this, but when you say that, when you say there's a bit of a risk, I just want to make sure and I want people to hear, are you talking physiologically or just neurologically? Like, I mean, like, like meaning serious danger or you're talking about, like you said, paranoia at first. And to me, there's a big difference there because that's the case with any type of, you know, way you, you change your mood or, you know, intoxication. No, so there's no actual like danger Unless you're smoking something that's like moldy and gross. The only day like risk that comes with it is that you might go into what's called a green out, which is just when you get a little bit upset. It's like a panic attack is about the worst of it. No, but go ahead. Oh, yeah, cool. So, so welcome. welcome and uh, yeah. Jump so on I it. was born in 1980. So when I was, you know, coming of the age of having a wherewithal of the world around me, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. It's like the height of the D.A.R.E. program, right? And I smoke, I have smoked. It's not a huge part of my life and never has been. But I will say uh, in homage to cannabis, it was one of the first things that really sort of like opened my mind up to skepticism in general because it was so demonized. And then to find out that it's, not as bad as I was sold. You know, I mean, you're talking about like... I'm, a tw I'm sorry, Norwood. Yeah. One second. You, you, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I heard this clearly. Are you saying that the devil's lettuce was somehow demonized? At the same time, it's the height of the satanic panic, right? Anyone playing Dungeons and Dragons is like going to take you straight to hell, run in the other direction. The most impressionable time of my life when I was really trying to figure it out was when, you know, I mean, uh, like, think of all that, like, fucking stranger danger, right? Dare, like, there's a uniformed police officer wearing a firearm with pictures of all these horrible things. Yeah, when, when Nancy Reagan is involved, marijuana doesn't And have a beyond that, like, at that time, sex education was, if you kiss a girl, your dick's gonna fall off. Like, it was all, like, PowerPoint presentations about, this is what herpes looks like, and, like, don't hold hands. And I enjoy weed. I live in Florida. I have a prescription for it. You guys ever want to stop by and hang out, hook you up. But it's not something that I enjoy as much as the wine that I'm drinking right now. But at the same time, it's so upsetting to me, but yet so responsible for the initiation of my enlightenment that the wine that I'm drinking right now is responsible for so much more harm historically, currently, than weed will ever be. Like, yes, you can smoke too much weed, and there might be some side effects that I don't know about, but like pretty much what's going to happen is you're just going to get fired because your ass ain't getting off the couch. Whereas alcohol, in, in Nor I, have a, I have a question yeah. for you because you're the one who brought this yeah. up, you know, and, and we see wine is prevalent in society and it's been for a long, long. Do you think if Jesus would have turned a regular plant into THC instead of water into wine, we wouldn't have all these issues we have today with alcohol and the Catholic Church and the blood shit? They might have learned to chill out. Jesus, honestly, like the, the, the picture we see of Jesus looks like he should always have a joint in his hand. You mean the picture of the white girl? Um, the, 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 you know, the, the white. Listen, the I have Caucasian Jesus. In dress. Considering Jesus does not have an earthly father, therefore he has two X chromosomes. I will not speak negatively about the world's most famous transgender. So I'm not going to speak on him. I will tell or, or her or they that part wasn't in the original Greek. But 
in my opinion, everything in, in this country, no matter how you want to slice it, comes down to money. And there's a shitload more money in wine than there is in a plant that I can grow my own seeds for and never hear from the supplier again and just live happily off the land forever. So yeah, that's my perspective of weed. Like I, I have a lot of appreciation for it, even though I don't smoke that much of it, because I can tell you right now, like the moment I found out like how non-threatening it was, it was like when you found out Santa Claus wasn't. I'm like, well, why the fuck did we go through this? Just buy me a fucking present and let's move on. Like, why'd you have to break my heart? Like, why'd you have to scare me over this thing that's like coming over the border and like cartels and all this? Like, like you said at the at the onset, Dale, like it's just a fucking plant. And, and you know, and I, I can't tell you the times in my life where I've had someone, you know, saying to me that it's negative, they don't like it. And it's usually because we see it spoken, like you talked about the D.A.R.E. program and all these things, spoken about in such a negative manner. And then at some point, they eventually, for some reason, get to try it. I've, I've never had anyone try it when they felt like they could, like they gave in, like, okay, I could try it, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the first time say, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. I don't know why I did it. Like almost every time it's like, that's not that bad. Like it's like a, you know, now there are people physiologically, it affects people differently. Yeah. But, but like Ganja Goblin said, the worst you'll get is somebody going, feeling a little paranoid. Like I'm a little concerned. Oh yeah. What's happening. But like, and it fades pretty easily if you're just talking about taking a hit or two. And so to me, I, I, it's helped so many people. I know people who it's helped greatly. And they fought it for years and years and years purely because of societal norms that told them it wasn't okay. So I call it the smoky scaries, right? Like you get super fucked up. Like I can remember being in college and like, like the campus police pull up out front just for like whatever the hell they've got going on. But I just hit a huge bong and I'm like, oh, fuck, they got me. But that's why I compare it to stranger danger, right? To me, the way that weed has been presented historically in this country is the same misdirection that stranger danger provided. You took an entire segment or an, almost an entire generation of children and focus their attention on the dangers of strangers and nobody was watching their fucking uncle you know what i mean or their youth pastor right like you are so much more likely to get in a wreck close to your house fondled by somebody that you know and it's just maddening there's so much of that misdirection for whatever reason whether it's money whether it's for a political agenda just to scare the shit out of you know whoever xyz um, but yeah, that's, that's my take on weed. Like, like it was one of like, I can remember coming to my senses and going, fuck, like I really need to think for myself because these motherfuckers are lying to me like every chance they get period. Yeah. And I stated it as mind opening, you know, and I talked about, I guess I, I think I mentioned the phrase, I said something about um, abstract thinking and that to me, when you talk about, you know, th- you know, I'm going to relate this to religion naturally, but breaking free from just the standard form of thinking. Well, it's one of those things that can, there are a lot of things that can do that. Um, but it's one of the things that can do that for you because it makes you slow down. It, it, it breaks those little hesitancies you normally have. You know, you know how alcohol, people who drink will understand this. It, your tendencies start fading. The same thing happens with marijuana, but it's more just neurological where you, you start thinking about things going, oh, it's okay to think this way. Where we're drunk, you might go, oh, it's okay to do this. And that might not be the right thing, you know? I get that a lot with THC where I genuinely feel like, wow, I'm exploring different ways. And now I don't think of it as an odd thing anymore because that's, you know, on a regular basis for me. But I'm telling you, I, I take a hit when I need to calm down, relax. And I take a hit when I literally need to think. All of those negative things that we hear about that, they, they fade if you try it. I'm not telling people go try this. I'm saying if you think it could be beneficial to you in any way, when you've heard the things you've heard, I suggest it. And that's very different, you know, than go do it. It's almost as though the majority of the universal narratives that we hear are just wrong. Now on Twitter, there's this huge thing about like alpha male. Men need to act a certain way. Josh Hawley from Missouri is writing a book about how men need to be. And Dale and I- Wait a minute, I have have a question. Do we know that Josh Hawley can write or he's, he's making a book? Somebody's writing it Look, for him. Somehow Trump got through the art of the deal, so I'm um, I'm not judging anybody. Dale and I were texting back, or not texting, but tweeting back and forth the other day on this subject of the alpha male, and I told him I was like, dude, I'm a I'm a proud beta. Like I make great money. Like I work for an international bank. I'm 40 years old. My girlfriend outranks me at the same bank by multiple levels. I live in her house. I'm currently sitting here watching her dogs. I cook her dinner, and like I could not be happier. And coming back to 
ganja or weed, like it really was one of those first moments at, I mean, I, I can remember sitting at Edwards Acuff's house, in Moultrie, Georgia. His dad was actually the head of the Republican Party for all of Georgia. We went up into his attic, and he was like, dude, you ever smoke weed? And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, oh, my God, we're going to get some trouble. He's like, here, hit this. I got high for an hour or so. We ate a bunch of, like, you know, pretzels filled with peanut butter. And I was like, oh, like, I'm not dead. Like, you know, my dick's not falling off. Like, all the shit that they told me was going to happen. Like, it's just not true. I'm telling you, like, it was, it was a gateway drug for me not to more harmful drugs or more excessive drugs. It was a gateway drug in the terms of like, if the majority of the people around you are harping on something, that's what you need to question. Yeah, there's usually something to that uh, when it's the case, especially if, if there's no clear evidence outside of the things people are saying. And that's what it is with that. You talk about satanic panic, uh, dare type stuff. Like, if you look for the evidence as to the harm it does, well, that doesn't exist. So, you know, if you're just listening to, to the talking head, that's a different story. No one's ever died from it. The worst you'll get is munchies and paranoid. Yeah, I, I say I say that, like, honestly, and, and I'll tell people this, too, because that's the one negative thing that I get. I do get the munchies, um, but depending on what I do and how I do it. However, because I know that I'm going to, I prep, like, ahead of time, I go... Okay, I'm going to be really high tonight. So what I do is I'll do like, uh, this is straight up serious, celery and peanut butter or whatever and have it prepped sitting in the fridge because that's my snack instead of eating a sandwich or a bag of Doritos or something, you know what I mean? But the munchies, I've yet to find a way to get rid of. Other than keeping yourself extremely occupied. If your brain is very occupied, the hunger kind of fades away. Also, we've had a few people try to get in and we're having connection issues, it looks like again, like, but I've had three people try to get in and not be able to. So if you'd like to get in request, don't know what the issue is, but again, we are definitely having somewhat of an issue with at least a few people. You can get a little bit scatterbrained when you're actually up on the weed, which can make some executive choices a little bit more difficult, but it helps to kind of relax away from sometimes the overarching stress of the fear of repercussions that a lot of people have over honestly minuscule things. We live in a society where due to the low amount of actual risks to our lives on a day-to-day -day basis and the fact that everything's handed to us, that we're constantly finding boogeymen to be stressed about. And it's easy to get caught up in that, and we can make it very easy to let go of that for a bit. Well, which is listen, I mean, we're talking about THC right now, and then people have how that's been vilified. We talk about this all the time. When, when tensions are higher and people are worried about things, we start seeing all of these weird conspiracy theories, right? And this is an, it's along those lines of... I'm worried, I'm concerned, I don't know about this, and anxiety is going to run wild. The irony that we are currently sitting on a social media platform that the algorithms figured out that fear and hate sells and funneled it to us to create the environment we currently live in is not lost on me. Yeah, but you don't, if you speak like that, you're going to upset the overlords. And I, I know we're recording right now, so please stop. If I was scared, Dale, I'd be in church. <sighs> yeah. Um, and you know, it's funny because I, I was thinking about this too, the THC thing. Uh, one of the reasons I appreciate THC so much is because it helps me deal with the people who are usually telling me that I shouldn't be smoking THC. Like nonstop, I have devoutly religious people doing the whole, oh, that's a drug and you should not do that. It's evil, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the only fucking reason I need it is because I have to deal with you all the time. So maybe if you chill the fuck out and let people do what they want to do, I'd smoke a little less weed. Like, it's absolutely true. But to me, it is also, uh, Norwood said they had a medical card. I'm also a medical patient. I, I, I want to be honest. I would do it if I wasn't able to get a medical card because I did it when I was younger. And it was always been part of my, not always, but it's been a pretty big part of my life uh, for a good chunk of it. And I want to tell one quick anecdotal <laughs> Fun story. This just made me think of it because I thought about when I was younger. I once hit a blunt. Actually, for anybody who doesn't know, it's the same thing as a joint, but a little less Caucasian-y. But I once hit a blunt from Method Man uh, of Wu-Tang Clan, famous rapper. Um, and if anybody knows, that's kind of a big deal. He's That's a huge a deal. I was born in 1980. <laughs> I'm, I'm fangirling the fuck out right now. Well, w but I want to be very clear that Method Man did not hand me a blunt. I was at a Wu-Tang concert, and I was sitting row eight. 
and he handed it down into the crowd, and I was the second person to grab it. So still counts. Still oh, counts. Oh, right. Wait, listen, wait. That's so a ten... W. Own oh, it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a W from the W, right? <laughs> I was throwing up the W uh, hitting the, well, hitting the J from the W. Yeah. No, it was really a moment when I was younger. It was at Wu-Tang and Rage Against the Machine concert. Like, it was a nuts. That was 19, I think, 19 or 20. Um, but, yeah, I hit a blunt from Method Man. That's, that's on my list. Can I make a confession about CBD? Nunya, welcome to OK Atheist. And Norwood, go ahead. Yeah, no worries. So I'm I'm an old man now. I'm in my 40s, right? So like I'm not up on current things happening. I live in Florida now. A couple of years ago, I moved down from Charlotte when CBD first came out. I did not know that it wasn't actual weed, right? Full disclosure. And I was in Asheville, which is a beautiful city if you ever go. And they have like pockets of Amish, you know, conclaves that are building furniture or whatever. And one of their stores was selling CBD. Of course, it has a pot leaf on it. And I'm like, oh, shit, like maybe there's something where like the Amish can like get away with it the same way that like Native Americans can like have casinos. So I buy this like $60 bottle of CBD oil and I'm like, OK, well, I'm on vacation. I'm flying home like I'm scared shitless you know, like getting back into the airport, whatever, like it doesn't smell. So I think I'm good. And, you know, just in case you're wondering, there's no drug dogs at the airport. They're all bomb dogs, but I'm still scared. So literally talking about like preparing for the evening, like what Dale was saying in terms of like getting your snacks ready. It was like 630 on a Friday, the weekend starting. I had all my food laid out on the coffee table. And at the time, I know that there's like CBD gummies and all that, but it was just an eyedropper. You put it under your tongue and like hold it for 15 seconds. I'm telling y'all, like I sat down on the couch, like prepared to be launched into the atmosphere. Full disclosure, when I get high, I'm all nature shows, nature documentaries. Like I want to see the fish swimming and the and the sea lions walking across Antarctica or whatever the case. Wait a minute, Norwood, like, Norwood, this is an amazing story and I want to hear the rest. But I just want to say that always when you get high, there is nothing more beneficial than adding that nature shit and David Attenborough's oh, voice. If I could get Sir Attenborough to like be on my voicemail... I will have made it. Which, by the way, if anyone has access to any sort of mushrooms that you can't buy at the store, you need to watch Fantastic Fungi on Netflix. I sat there for an hour waiting for that shit to hit me. I was so upset. I was like, what is happening? Like, I thought the Amish had, like, screwed me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still wasn't aware that the CBD wasn't THC. I thought the Amish people had screwed me. I was talking to my girlfriend. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly back up there and, like, Fuck them up. Like, and at the same time, Netflix had a docuseries about the Amish mafia. I was like, the fucking Amish mafia got my ass. I was just going to jump in and say, when you, you know, you said Amish mafia, I thought of, uh, cause you know, we're almost similar age, but I thought of Coolio and gangsters paradise and then Amish paradise that exactly. was done by weird Al Yankovic. And I combined them and I'm like, Oh, gangster Amish. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that everybody, everyone was aware that there's actually three major cannabinoids. Um, there's, CBG, which is basically considered the mother cannabinoid, and it binds to the same sorts of receptors as the THC is absorbed by, but doesn't really have too much of an effect on the body. There's CBD, which is the one that binds to those receptors. So a smaller dose of CBD has more of an effect overall, and both sort of nullify and prolong the effects of THC. Um, but then CBD, as opposed to CBG, will, is what causes the muscle release and relaxing. And then for the THC is absorbed, which is why it's the stuff that um, usually people are looking for in very high percentages, because you need a lot of it to be absorbed very quickly in order to get high off of it. So if you get something that's like a one-to-one, -one, that won't get you high. If you get something that's lots of CBD and like you're concerned about if you're going to be okay to go and operate machinery, if it's just CBD, you're fine. If it's as soon as you're talking about THC that you have the chance for inebriation. That's a very good point. And I want to say one thing because we're talking about, you know, how it can affect you and the CBD doesn't, you know, do that to people. I'm going to take a hit right now. And when I come back, I want you to tell me if you can notice a difference, okay? Can I just ask Brian, because I can't blow his picture up, <laughs> is that an Australian Shepherd or a Mini? Or what kind of dog are you working with there, B? Somebody's really, really high. Are you asking the cat who the dog is? Is it a cat? Okay, look, again, I told y'all I was He's old. asking Norwood. Is Brian's picture a cat? It looks like an Australian Shepherd. All right, every, everybody listen for one second, okay? I don't know what's hap I don't know what's happening here, but what I do know is that everybody's extremely confused. Remember, I said I would smoke and see if we could notice a difference. Why am I the one explaining this confusion right now? I just took a huge hit. 
So what happened is Norwood was asking Brian about the picture. Then Nunya said, no, they're asking Norwood. But I don't think Norwood was asking about Norwood's picture. So why? Are you guys high? What's happening here? Are you fucking with me? I have another amazing story I have to tell. So here it is. When I was a teenager in high school, uh, I sold marijuana on the side. And I used to literally pack it in my room at my mother's house. Like, it's what I did. And she knew that I smoked. Uh, maybe even, I don't think she knew I sold, but she knew that I smoked. Um, but we didn't really talk about it. It was kind of like, don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. One day I came home from school and I had, I didn't have a lot in my room. I had a, like a dime bag. Back then, the dime bag was a thing, <laughs> but a very small bag. I had a dime bag of weed in my room, and it was missing. I was like, fuck. Like, I know she took it. Like, there's no other place it could have gone. It's definitely gone, you know. So I went to my mother, and I said, Mom, I ask you a question. Did you uh, take something from my room? And she's like, well, what's missing in your room? I went, come on, you know, you know what it is. Did you take something from my room? And she's like, no, tell me what it is, and I'll tell you if I took it. <laughs> Just making me say it, right? So, well, there's a dime bag of marijuana missing from my room. And she's like, that's not true. I said, yeah, it is. There was, you wanted me to say it, right? The dime bag missing from my room. She goes, no, no, no. There was a dime bag. And she holds it up and she goes, and now it's a nickel bag. And that was the day I learned that my mother smoked marijuana. 100% true story. I, like I genuinely was a teenager and I thought, oh, I'm fucked. And my penalty was that she took half of my bag of weed and smoked it already while I was in school. You didn't need to post to ask this, but uh, you asked about nectar. Um, I think, do you mean like nectar collectors and like the whole process of using them to take dabs or, or do you mean like honey oil? So that you use to take dabs. So last night I tried to do it like for the first time ever and I ended up burning a hole in my finger because it just got like liquid and dripped onto my finger and I panicked and I didn't even get high. Okay, so when you're using a nectar collector, what you're doing is, or what you need is a little flask bowl that's like heat resistant you put your like um distillate or extract anything that is like waxy um it can't really be a powder and when you heat the end of the tool you're trying to get it up into, to the temperature where you're going to be vaporizing it when you get it close to the material instead of touching it so you put the material in the bottom of the glass bring the tip down close to the material and then you suck up the vapor as it uh forms from the uh from it like almost like a hummingbird when i picked it up it just straight up dripped on my finger I, i'm not kidding you i stared at it for a second and then freaked out whenever you're working with any of that stuff like uh waxes or distillate or or any anything in that condensed form it's you're either gonna have to heat it up a lot and it's going to become super, super sticky, or it's sticky as it is on its own. Um, so you're going to have the problem of it sticking and burning or just sticking to the point where you're ruining stuff. So you have to be really careful and, and kind of like learn, know what you're doing and just take it slow at first. But once you do learn it, like it sounds funny, but once you do learn mm -hmm. it, it becomes easy. The whole heating bit that Dale was just going over, there's a bit of a pattern to it, which can make it a little bit easier to tell what you're doing. If you're using glass or you're using titanium, you heat it up till it's like really, really hot, like glowing hot. And then you're going to take the heat away and leave it for about 10 seconds. And then you're going to bring it down and you're going to sip slowly. And that's going to bring up just around the, about the right temperature. Go ahead, Norwood. You reminded me with your story of your cool mom. When I was in high school, my mom is off the boat Irish, like from from Southern Ireland, from Connacht, didn't shave her armpits until about 15 years ago. Like she's that European. OK, and I love her and she's my ride or die. She found my bag. I think it was the summer after my junior year. And she walks into my room. It's in her hand like I'm caught. And she goes, hey, is this yours? And I don't lie to my mom like. You can call me a mama's boy. I've already told you I'm a beta. I don't give a shit. I was like, yes, ma'am, it's mine. And she goes, I've heard this will shrink your balls and just drops it on the dresser and walks out. And I'm telling you guys, I did not smoke for like two fucking years. Like it scared the shit out of me. So respect to cool moms. I, 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 well, I want to say two things. Number one, that was a great story again. Number two, I feel like the benefits of marijuana would be worth losing a little size on my testicles like that's not if it was your penis that's a different story but testicles like i don't know i'd give up a little bit for some weed i mean same yeah but you said you were why were you so worried like i i would literally like check because i was 17 and again I, it was the 90s stranger danger dare 
Like, sex ed was about, like, huge sores covering your body. Like, we had no fuck. We didn't have the fucking internet. I couldn't no. Google anything. Like, anything Norway. that came out of anyone's no. mouth, just, I had to accept it. I know. You were, we were living in a different world. No, but that is true. Like, you know, you said that kind of funny, but it really is true. Like, back then, it was a lot more difficult to find out these answers to questions other than, like, an appeal to authority, people in your life who could tell you the answers. And that's not the best way to get your answers all the time. <laughs> I could not imagine being the parent of a 10 year old right now. Like you have no, you have no backup. You have no shot. You have no authority. Like anything, like my parents lied to me every day and I had no way to like, you know, refute them. Well, like, I, I, I do want to add one thing though, because like we had the cool parent thing to share there, but uh, most people who do know me know now it's the exact opposite. Now, um, now um, there's a demon in me and I'm going to burn in hell for, Token on the devil's lettuce. But back then it was like, ha ha ha. Like, that's how drastically that part of my life has changed. If you are sent to hell, Dale, stop by my condo. We'll do fireball shots. It's right on the lake. I got a beautiful view. You're welcome anytime. Plus, I heard your better half is. Oh, yeah, 100%. Which, by the way, anyone who thinks the opposite is losing the battle. I'm here to tell you. So I, I just got thinking when we were talking about like dime bags and whatnot. One time, one of my buddies and I, back when I was living out in Comox, BC, we were farting around in the forest and we find a little bag of weed. And it, I don't know what it would have been worth because I was clean cut back then like a dummy. Um, and we're like freaking out because of all the dare stuff that we've been fed. So we call the cops and they come and collect it and they go driving down the road. We end up going walking up that way because where they headed to was towards the beach. And we end up seeing their cop car. With some smoke pouring out the windows. Yes. Uh, there used to be a lot more benefits for, you, you, listen, you know, we, we can talk about all the fucked up stuff, right? But like, wouldn't it be better if that instead of like hurting people, they just took a hit of your shit? <laughs> Calm down a little bit. Well, that actually happened to another one of my buddies. He was like standing out in the middle of the forest out behind one of the schools. Cop comes up to him and asks him, what are you doing? He's like, I'm smoking weed. And cop's like, can I have some? And again, it sparks another story. So a very quick story. When I was younger, again, very late teens, early 20s, I went to a house party. And back then I would go to house parties and have no fucking idea whose house I was at or how I got there. Like one of my friends knew somebody who knew a house. You know, that's how it works. And you're sitting at a party partying. Like I remember where I was, but I don't know whose place it was. So we were sitting in a circle. Everybody's passing the joint around. And I passed it to the guy next to me. And he said, like, yeah, good thing there's no cops here, right? And I went, yeah, we're good. I know people, like, over there or whatever. And he pulls out his badge. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And he goes, I'm fucking with you. And I'm like, wait, that's not real? He goes, no, it's real. I'm off duty. Take a hit. <laughs> so that's the, it, that's the whole story. But, like, I remember that because I was, like, 19-ish, you know, and it was still, oh, fuck. This guy just showed me a badge. He's going to arrest me now. But he was there to party. <laughs> One of my very best friends is a five foot nine ginger, long-bearded man, white, named Michael Jackson. He's... He doesn't work now because his wife is a cardiologist at a university that I won't name, so you can't Google her. He was a narc in North Carolina when we lived up there. Now we both live in Florida. He's about an hour away. He is the biggest pot smoker I have ever met. Wait a minute. White Michael Jackson wasn't a narc. He was a smooth criminal. Which is why he was such a good narc, because you would think so. I'm telling you, if you met this dude, you'd be like, this guy's a fucking leprechaun. But he, I mean, he was a narc. And... He smoked so much weed. To be honest, a, a, a real leprechaun would make an amazing narc because nobody's going to be like, oh, what are you ratting on us? They're going to be like, oh, shit, a leprechaun. Fair point. They just had their holiday the other day, right? February, a couple, few weeks ago. Uh, excuse me. I've told you my mom's Irish. We had it. We had our holiday. We sure did. What, I don't know how I'm supposed to congratulate. Did you chase all the snakes away? What are you supposed to do? I don't know. You drink, you drink beer and chase snakes, right? I'm feeling stereotyped at the moment. And yeah, I was told this was a safe space, Dale. Yeah, I, 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 okay, I deeply apologize for telling you that this was a safe space. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because we talk about that stuff. I was saying something yesterday about, because I, I was raised Jewish, and there's so many of the things that would go along with Jewish, like heritage, that were kind of part of my life, my childhood. But now Irish is different because the I Irish is not connected to a religion in any way, shape, or form. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Absolutely, it's connected to a religion, which is the entire problem that my people suffer in that island, because depending on which religion you're attached to... Depends oh, I, I get the Protestant, yeah, I, I, get, the, I get the fight. But what, I, when I, what I'm saying is, if you want to label yourself Irish, 
you're not saying that you're religious in any form in America. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if I say Jewish, people aren't going to go, oh, he likes matzah. Where, like, if you say Irish, they might go, oh, he, he likes to drink, you know? Like, yeah. I went to matzah. That's, that's the one thing people think of when they think of Judaism. I just because I see it in the uh, supermarket, the grocery stores now. I saw it the other day when I was thinking because there's like, you know, they cater to whatever the holidays are. And it was St. Patrick's Day. Um, and, you know, and now there's Easter. But there's no, there's always a little section of Passover stuff near me, and that's how I know there's a Jewish holiday coming up. It's so embarrassing to me to walk down the ethnic aisle of Publix, and it's just like hot sauce and matzo balls. It's like, it's, ba- it's basically the Goya section and a couple other things, which mean which is why you have to go to if if that's the type of stuff you're purchasing. In general, you have to go to more mom and pop or specialty type uh, spot to get the non basic <laughs> basic American stuff. I want to say one more thing too with the THC thing. I ingest every evening. We haven't even talked about ingesting yet because there are so many different ways to, to take it in. But I ingest every single evening. And that's you know, not everybody. Not a lot of people do that. It's not common. But I'm literally I've been eating my nighttime thing as we've been speaking. Um, and I eat about the same amount every evening, about an hour and a half to two hours before I want to wind down, relax, get ready for bed, Um, which, you know, if you take a hit of THC, uh, of flour or wax or whatever, you're going to feel that within a few seconds. With this stuff, I start gradually feeling it at about 30, 45 minutes, and then about an hour I can feel it, and in about two to three hours, it's like full force. But the difference, and I want to be clear about this, if anybody hasn't done it and is going to try it, you can't get out. (laughs) So like if you take a hit, you can slowly get out of that in 15, 20, 30 minutes. But if you do an edible, ingestible, you're in it for six, eight hours, depending on what you take. You know, So I just want to be clear about that as well. Go ahead, Ganja. I was just saying, it's, there, it's safe to start low and go slow with edibles because it, it's very easy to go overboard without thinking, especially when you get something that's like, if you're new to weed, you've never done anything before, and you get something that's like a hundred milligram bag, and you sit down and you absentmindedly eat that whole thing, you're stuck for a while. A lot of times they they come in, you know, like you said, like bags like that, and it's candy. So people go, "Ooh, candy! <laughs> mm, piece of candy!" I hate to sound like fake James Woods, but my first experience with edibles, again, as a child of the '90s, you know, we were buying it out of the back of a car in you know small town South Georgia, and you just smoked it. I was 35, so this would be like 2000, 2014, 2015, took a trip out to San Francisco, which was one of the you know pioneers of, okay, you know let's, let's open this up, let's make it legal. Went to a shop, and I was like, okay, I'm going to stay away from what's now called flour. Gummies were not a thing. I bought a stick of butter, right? Went back to the hotel, woke up the next morning, went down to the breakfast area, and got a bagel, toasted it, and just spread butter all over it. Having no clue about now that it's legal and now that, you know, the the nerds who are into it can, like, do their science experiments and raise the THC level. I mean, I put probably two tablespoons of butter on this bagel. And guys, I'm telling you, like, when Dale says you can't get away from it, like, do not start with an edible. I was incapacitated, like, on the streets of San Francisco, for at least that day, if not until the next morning, I was just a zombie. And I had no reference for it. It was amazing. I remember the beef eaters, or the guys dressed as beef eaters out in front of the Drake Hotel. I danced with one of them, jumped on a streetcar. Uh, and it just so happened to be the same weekend. If you've never been to San Francisco, it's fabulous. One of my favorite cities. I go a couple times a year. But they do a nude marathon through the streets. So here I am, just completely zonked out and like 4,000 naked people run by and I'm like, oh my God, like edibles are just so amazing. I I have a somewhat unrelated question. Wouldn't in general it be difficult, at least for most men, to run a marathon while naked? You should try skydiving. I feel like skydiving naked would be much easier than running a marathon. I I, I know I couldn't run a marathon naked. Like, I feel like that sounds like it hurts. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I digress. Not the topic. I feel like by posing that question, you're kind of bragging, Ganja. But I'm going to no, I'm, no. I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to let that sit there. No, it's saying that anybody. Okay, I, I don't know. I first I have to be clear. That's not a brag. It's saying I said a man, anybody who has testicles and a penis in between their legs, I would think that would be an issue. <laughs> 
It doesn't matter the size, necessarily. Again, it's in a state where weed is legal, so I'm not even really sure they knew what was happening. But yes, everything was out anyway, of Anyway, I actually live, and this is a, a side note, but to the San Fran thing, I live in a town or right next to it, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware now. Um, and it's basically, if anybody doesn't know, it's a smaller San Fran East Coast. It's nothing like San Francisco, but it's, it's definitely a very LGBTQ-friendly area. A lot of, like, the majority of the bars, clubs are, are noted gay bars, clubs, and we have those type of events. It's, it's not the same level at all, but it's one of the nicest, most wonderful places to live, and it's so funny to me how many people still would shy away from it purely because there are people who have a different sexual orientation than they're used to. Like, they're, they're giving up so much of life, it's just sad. On that note, I would recommend not starting to smoke weed if you're under the age of 25. Unless you've already got, like, your, like, life sorted out from that point, which is very uncommon. And I will say this, like, I'm going to agree there. I'm not going to put a number to anything at all. But what I will say is, even for someone who smokes the way I do, I smoke on a daily basis, um, and I do edibles every evening. However, I do not smoke when I need to be productive when I need to drive, when I need anything like that. So like I wake, basically my day is in general, like I'll wake up in the morning and be as productive as I'm going to be for the day, get done whatever I need to get done. And when I'm done that part of my day, I take a few hits and relax. And then I do the edible in the evening, but I, I never get high and drive a car. I, I really do not drive high at all, at all. And everybody thinks I do because I smoke every day, but it's just not true. Even when I have like, you know, some type of business meeting or anything important, the marijuana is not involved because I, even though it, it doesn't hurt me, it can slow down my thinking. So there's a difference between abstract thinking when you're trying to learn and, and, and think of things and trying to work and fill out a paper. You know what I mean? So uh, when I have to concentrate, I make sure that I don't have it in my system or to the least <laughs> possible. There's always some in my system. I think the experience and like getting accustomed to how your body reacts to it, you will recognize and find like that sweet spot. So in Florida you know, medicinally, it's available. So when I was in high school, the THC content of the dirt weed that we were buying was probably 10, 15%. If you go buy flour now, it's probably 30, 40%. You buy a vape pen, it's 90%. But you will find the area that you can exist in where your mind almost becomes void of anything other than what you're paying attention to. And, and I've watched movies that I've seen before maybe even several times but then watching it high in that zone right so like going back to going back to running uh there's a there's a there, there's a place in exercise that's called your exercise benefit zone it's like your peak like place where you're running at a certain pace or you're moving at a certain pace your heart rate is a certain pace that that's the peak time where you're doing the most benefit for yourself health wise you can find that same space under the influence of THC. I, I want to say one more thing, and uh, I'm going to close this shortly, but I think one thing that would be fun to do, I know there's only a couple of us, but also if anybody uh, can message to the group, I don't know, Ganja, if you've been checking them, I'm going to, I'm going to start this. Uh, and if you could check those, because this would be good if anybody has it. Um, movie related to or having to do with THC, because there are some cult classics, and I know we could do this forever, but just because we have a few minutes left, I thought I'd throw that out there. It's, it's, it's difficult to choose one. And I didn't even think about this, but the one I will say, because I mentioned Method Man earlier and thought of how high, but, uh, but the one I will say for me, if I had to pick one, I think it's half-baked. Um, and I would assume Ganja Goblin, you could do that with me line for line, but I don't know. And that was like multiple years of my life. Half-baked was like, I'm, I'm going to be serious. I probably watched that movie within a two, three year span, 50 to 60 times. Like I would watch it like once every two weeks. For like two years, it was a normal thing. And that was because we were sitting around getting stoned after high school, and that's what we watched. So, so that's that's what I wanted to ask Ganja Norwood, and if anybody else can. Do you have any movies related to or involving THC that are in your repertoire of top movies? Honestly, uh, I, I wish I could answer better. But the way I was grow uh, raised was very conservative and Christian, so I didn't really get any exposure. So one of my favorite moments involving it in a movie was in one of the scary movies. I can't remember which one it was of this dude who was a clear and obvious stoner throughout the entire film who ends up being killed by being rolled up in his bed sheet and lit up like a joint himself. That sounds like it's uh, of the Sharknado nature type movie. <laughs> like that level. 
But 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 I'll say this in in half baked. If anybody knows, there is also a large bag of marijuana, Mary Jane, that he falls in love with, and Dave Chappelle dates at one period. It's going to sound really odd if you haven't seen it. It's really odd if you have seen it, but he does date a bag of weed a little bit. I, I also love it is, uh, if we're going to just throw them out. The Harold and Kumar movies. I would say all of them, but I guess there's two or three, but like all of them. Um, I'm a huge fan of those Harold and Kumar movies, and it might sound funny because they're kind of goofy, but they're also really well done. Like, they're intentionally that goofy. And shout out to Neil Patrick Harris, who was a fucking superstar in those movies. Anyway, if you want to see somebody uh, portray being high, drunk, any type of uh, weird, I mean, LSD types of high mushrooms and shit, he is fantastic in that movie. (laughs) Doogie is the shit. Hey, Ring. Welcome. Hey, um... So because us us Canadians are like really, really awesome, part of the first Harold and I think it was the first Harold and Kumar movie, the one where they go to White Castle was filmed in Ontario. Okay, I have to jump in because that's really cool. But I would like to say one more thing. The the, The first one, the Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, which Ring is referencing. They do go they do go to White Castle in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is where the fuck I'm from. Yeah, that's cool. I'm I'm, I'm from. I'm from Marlton, New Jersey, which is the town next to Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Like, I was in Cherry Hill my entire life all the time. However, that White Castle is not there. Yeah, the one parking lot scene is in, like, parking lot of a shopper's drug mart. <laughs> so there's a little bit trivia. So something else brought to you from Canadians. <laughs> so, so wait, the thing that was brought to us by Canadians was a scene in a movie about New York and New Jersey. Thank you. Police Academy, too, as well, because, you know, you can see the CN Tower and shit in there. I'm just going to say I'm more proud of the fact that we gave them Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, like, I want Ryan Reynolds back. You have to give him back. This is, like, a weird thing. Like, that's what you have? Like, we, you gave us Ryan yeah, Reynolds? Yeah, yeah. And, and we're going we're gonna to give you um, Pierre Polivier. We, you, you, if you're going to give us names, it has to be, like, Ryan Reynolds, one we can pronounce. We can't pronounce love, law, blah, 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 whatever that was. We, we all, if Canadians affectionately, call him PP. We PP. We PP. <laughs> Whoa. Well, he could have ran a marathon. <laughs> On that note, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, it was fun, but I'm going to keep getting a little more high and enjoy the rest of my evening. So thanks for being here. Be nice to each other. And uh, if you can't, take a hit, relax, and then be nice to each other. <laughs> take care, everyone. Okay.